What can we learn from a fish? No doubt you've heard of a CAT scan, a CT scan, and over the past few years we've been showing you images, including one of the deepest fish ever found in the Mariana Trench, and vowed to visit the place where these images were coming from. They call it the Friday Harbor Labs. It's part of the University of Washington. It even has its own campus on San Juan Island. You can see it from the deck of a Washington State ferry as you go in and out of Friday Harbor. It's that collection of brown buildings to the north. Here, fish come in all forms. So are you ready to do slime hag stuff? Sure. OK, you got to take off your jacket. Friday Harbor Labs is considered one of the world's top marine institutions and where I learned about the ability of a hagfish to defend itself. Oh, they're easy to pick oh, up. Yeah. No problem. Okay, I've been no, slimed. Yeah. <laughs> no, no problem, right? This, so this, so now drop it back amazing. in and watch what happens. Now, <laughs> so look, I mean, he'll just. This is hagfish <laughs> slime. Yeah. The mass quantities of slime not only make it slippery, but serve to coat the gills of sharks and other predators, causing an attacker to feel like it's suffocating and back off. It's also got fibers in it. Adam Summers is one of the scientists here. He's behind the effort to CT scan every fish, and he's very interested in the way fish protect themselves, whether that's slime or something else. This is a section of armor. So one of the things that I like to do is try to find inspiration for new technologies in the sea. Even off the lab's own docks, Summer says there are some 20 species of armored fish. And this one's not very big, maybe eight inches long. The fish is mobile until a predator bites down. The scales have microscopic pins on one surface that plug into tiny holes in the other. Suddenly you go from flexible armor to armor that's completely rigid, like one piece. That's kind of slick. You can swim freely until something grabs you, and then it's like you've got a shell around your body. Whoa. All the scales suddenly lock together. We had no idea, and there's no man-made armor that takes advantage of something like that. But it's really easy to think about how you might build something like that, isn't it? And slime is being studied for its ability to protect fish from viruses and bacteria. Could we learn something from slime to protect us humans? This is called the hammer jaw. The staggering variety between fish is being documented here as a knowledge base to help maintain and learn from that diversity, which is threatened by climate change. Summer's goal is to scan every species of fish, some 66,000. But if you can start scanning five at once, six at once, it makes a big difference. It's a big job. Scanning a can like this can take 12 hours. We want it to be snug, but not too snug. And this is the CT scanner, the thing that gets it done. This is a $340,000 machine. And there are very, very few of them in action. Paid for mostly through donations, the university allows others to come and use it for free. And it's not just fish. This is a dolphin. Danielle Engel is visiting from Florida Atlantic University studying dolphin vertebrae. And the holes in the bone actually tell a story. The signal in bone for how these animals move, what it could mean about their behavior, their ecology, um, how they develop. The tool was there, but she had no access to it. You know, there's no way that you can get a grant for $15,000 to look at the density of, of vertebral bone in marine mammals. And here, that cost barrier is removed. You can even print them out to study them better. This is the jaw from the scale feeding, uh, scale feeding piranha species. Matt Coleman specializes in piranhas and other South American fish. There are many kinds of piranhas, and unlike the old movie stereotype, they don't eat people. But evolution is a funny thing. At least two unrelated species of fish feed off of scales using different tools and techniques. This guy pries the scales off. With, with, with its mouth, the other species just rams into things with, with its face. But environmental change may create other opportunities. The CT scanners helping map it. It's a complicated outlook because extinction drives speciation. Um, the animals that don't survive sort of make room for the ones that do. And also, um, you're going to get sorting of certain traits 
and behaviors um, that are efficient in trying to offset go going extinct. This face is not a fish. It's a reptile, a chameleon. Turns out one of the world's top experts on this tropical creature works out of South Dakota. And he wanted to know what they looked like on the inside. And two weeks ago, he showed up here with a suitcase full of dead chameleons. You got, you got to see some of these things. They're just mind-blowingly cool. And he scanned them all. One of the best things about this is he scans them and then puts them up on the web for anyone to use. The bottom line is all of this, along with collaboration with other institutions, results in an online library of every species in the world. Yes, Summers has worked with bigger CT scanners. Whales and elephants will push the limits. We are fish, right? There's 33,000 species of ray-finned fishes, the ones you find in, in supermarkets. But then there's another 30,000 species of lobe-finned fishes. And we are lobe-finned fishes. If we want to understand how evolution worked, how we start with one lineage and have these great diversifications, what the diversifications in shape mean functionally, we have to be open-minded about what systems we study. In Friday Harbor, Glenn Farley, King 5 News.